I never turned on my light. Let's see. We're going to do this live on air. I had 20 minutes to get ready, and I didn't turn my light on. <laughs> live from somewhere in Rocky River on a, well, it's, it's no longer uh, light out, so I can't tell the weather, but it was sunny today. We got sun for the first time in about, I got in the car this morning. And I put on sunglasses for my drive. And I don't, I, I think it was the first time in, in about six weeks I put on sunglasses. It was phenomenal. 40 degrees today. It stayed light till about 5.30. Days are getting longer, everybody. Spring is around the corner. I know winter never ends in Cleveland, but maybe this year it will. We've had a pretty mild winter so far. We're halfway done or about halfway done officially with winter. And it's been pretty mild so far. So that's good news. A lot to get to. Thanks to all those who are joining me on a live edition of the bullpen with me, Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. A lot to get to today. We'll talk some Browns. We'll talk some Super Bowl. Uh, the Cavaliers can't be stopped right now. Also, I got some thoughts on baseball arbitration. And it may not sound that interesting, but I, I, bear with me here. I think you may find it a little more interesting uh, than it sounds on the surface. Uh, let's begin with some news from around the NFL. Um, Alex Van Pelt, Browns, a former Browns offensive coordinator in the last hour, has agreed to become, has been hired as the new offensive coordinator of the Patriots. Now, the Patriots' new head coach is a uh, defensive guy. So I would think that Alex Van Pelt would call plays. I don't know if that's officially been announced, but I just assume he will be calling plays this year. So um, it worked out. You know, we talked a lot about Alex Van Pelt getting fired, but in the end it worked out nicely for Alex Van Pelt because now it seems like at least he's going to have the opportunity to call plays. So it uh, worked out nicely for him. Now, in terms of the Browns specifically, obviously they have uh, hired a bunch of new coaches. There's been an adjustment to the coaching staff, a little, which is kind of interesting coming off a, what I would, I would qualify as a successful season considering the injuries and the overall poor quarterback play over the season, the fact that they won as many games as they did the fact that they um, won uh, or made it to the playoffs, to me, that's that's successful. For a sec By the way, the Patriots just tweeted out their new coordinators, including Alex Van Pelt, and it's hard to see the first names on this tweet. And I saw Springer as their special teams coordinator, and the first letter was J. And I thought that their offensive, their special teams coordinator was Jerry Springer, who sadly has passed away, the Jerry Springer. But it's not. It's Jeremy Stringer. Anyway, Springer, Springer. So um, one other thing on the Browns that I wanted to hit on here, I talked about in yesterday's podcast, the wide receiver situation. Um, and, and today on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, we talked about the fact of where the Browns stand in terms of the Super Bowl odds. Here at Bet Rivers, we put out our Super Bowl odds um, for the first time, I believe, yesterday. And I'm just going to hit refresh here, although I don't think I need to because I think it refreshes on its own. But I'm going to do it anyway just to be 100% certain. And uh, on the, the odds to win the Super Bowl next year, the Browns are plus 3,300. So they are the... Let's see, the 15th choice tied with the Bears and the Jaguars, 15th choice to win the Super Bowl. In the AFC, the teams with better odds than the Browns, the Chiefs at plus 700, the Ravens, the Bengals, and the Bills all at plus 1,000. Then you have the Dolphins at plus 2,000, they're fifth. The Texans are sixth, tied with some other teams in the NFC. Oh, no, tied with the Jets. So they're sixth at plus 2,500. Then eighth is the Chargers at plus 3,000, and then the Browns and Jags tied for ninth at plus 3,300. So based on how we see it at Bet Rivers, 
and I saw on a couple other books it, they were even longer odds. But here at Bet Rivers, we have the Browns as the ninth choice to win the AFC based on the current odds. Now, certainly, we are way early in the process. The uh, we haven't even had the 2024 Super Bowl yet, so talking about the 2025 Super Bowl is kind of crazy. But uh, the Browns are a lot lower than I thought. Like, I, I think they should have better odds than that. I would put them ahead of the Chargers, even with Harbaugh going in there. And that's another thing. Let me just talk about that for a minute. You know, when the Harbaugh thing was going on at Michigan and Ohio State fans were, you know, complaining about it, for I, I kind of got sick of hearing the complaints because it was just it was just so much. And but now that I've had it, now that it's not in my face every two seconds, there was something about Harbaugh in his press conference with the Chargers that really pissed me off. I was like, what kind of example are we setting? Like, I, by the way, I've said like way too many times in the first seven minutes here. I'm always critical of people that say like in real life a lot. There's a lot of members of the media, including here in Cleveland, that I, I sit and I count the amount of times they say like. And I usually take pride in the fact that I we all have crutches. Things you say too often, but like is not usually one of them for me. You usually the only time you say like is when you're not sure what you're saying next. And so I don't know if I'm having some brain freezes or what. Those these happen once in a while, but I think I said like about four or five times, maybe more. It's inappropriate. If you noticed it, I apologize. The problem now is now that I brought it to your attention, you are going to notice it more. I once texted a friend of mine in the business. Because I was listening to a show and I said, your partner has said like 19 times in five minutes. And then he couldn't stop hearing it the rest of the show. I made him lose his mind. But, you know, it had to be it had to happen. Needed to be done. I think the Browns should have lower odds than plus thirty three hundred. I do not think they're the ninth team in the AFC. More on that in a second. But I sidebarred with Harbaugh. What kind of example? I get it in sports. There's plenty. Maybe players and coaches shouldn't be role models. There's plenty of players and coaches that are great guys, women. There's plenty that are bad. Okay, I get it. Uh, it's not a perfect world. It's just like real life. But what are we teaching people when Jim Harbaugh cheats at Michigan, has a minimal penalty, he wins a championship based partly on his cheating. The Like I said, the consequences were minor. Now... There may be future consequences for Michigan. We shall see, but he doesn't get penalized by any of that. And he goes and signs a huge contract with the Chargers. So there's something about that smarmy look on his face with his dopey glasses that irritated me. And I want him to fail. I want the Chargers to lose. Uh, I apologize if you're a Charger. No, I don't. I don't because, you know, bleep you. I don't want the Chargers to do anything. I don't want Justin Herbert to succeed. I want the Chargers to completely fail. I want Harbaugh to get fired, but even that won't do anything because he's got guaranteed money. How the Jets are plus 2,500, I have no idea. Now, I guess you could argue the AFC East is not as good as the AFC North, which is true because, you know, you have the Bengals, the Browns, the Steelers, the Ravens. Overall, is better than what you got in the AFC East. But the AFC East is a pretty good division, too. And the Browns were way better than the Jets. And you could say, well, we got Aaron Rodgers coming back. Okay, but he's 40 and coming off Achilles tear. He conned some of you into believing he was going to be able to make it back this season. That was never going to happen. That was a typical Rodgers con job. You're going to bet they're plus 800 better than the Browns? No chance. But, hey, listen, if you're thinking of a futures bet, uh, the Browns are a good bet at plus 3,300. Uh, I, I I actually think the Jaguars are not a terrible b bet at plus 3,300 either. Our old friend Baker Mayfield is plus 7,000 with the Buccaneers. If you're a believer in Anthony Richardson, the Colts are plus 6,000. Look pretty good too. The biggest long shot on the board, the Panthers and the Titans at plus 15,000. The other New York teams, the other New York team, the Giants, they're a disgrace. They're tied for the second longest odds with Washington and the Patriots at plus 12.5. The thing, though, is the Patriots, uh, the Patriots especially, have a good chance to get a quarterback in this draft. Now, will he be good? Time will tell, and we'll do some more draft as the, the weeks go by. But uh, 
Anyway, so those are the odds right there. That's my thoughts on Harbaugh. A couple other quickies, and then I'll start taking your calls. If you want to jump in, I tweeted out the link. And you know what? I'm going to put it in the chat right here. Hi, everybody in the chat. I haven't had a chance to really look at the chat yet. But here's the link. I'm going to tweet it. Oh, wait a second. I'm not going to tweet it. I already tweeted it. I'm going to I'm going to put the link here in the chat. Here we go. Boom. There it is. I just put the, the link in the chat. If you click on that link, it, it, you, you click on that if you want to join me and be on air. If you just have a question, then that's fine. Just ask the question. But if you want to be on air, you can click on that. Uh, let's see. Creative Juice. Question. What is the most common phrase in sports talk? At the end of the day, or if I were to tell you at the start of the season, I think at the end of the day is more used. I use at the end of the day. That's one of mine. That I use too much. Uh, at the end of the day. If I were to tell you at the start of the season, I say that sometimes. I don't think that gets overused, though. Cottonwood Slim, I agree about the Chargers and Harbaugh. Jade Dog, I'm with you. Screw that cheater. Yes. Hello, Jade Dog. Hello, Willie. Hello, Creative Juice. Hello, Ricardo. People that have uh, sent messages so far. Diver Bob, Chargers changing their name to the Cheetahs to make new head coach more comfortable. That would make sense. Cheetahs, C-H-E-E-T-A-H-S. Uh, yeah, that's completely fair. So if you want to jump in, uh, you can do so. What do we got here? The chat is live. Okay, nothing else. All right, so click on the link if you want to come in and, and talk live, or you can tweet me a question at Adam the Bull, or you can uh, put a question in the uh, the chat. So wanted to talk about baseball arbitration. Now, before you go anywhere thinking that's boring, the whole process, if you don't know about it, so today we had our first result. Jazz Chisholm, one of the all-time great names, lost his arbitration hearing to with the Marlins. He was asking for 2.9 million. The Marlins offered 2.625 million. And the Marlins won the arbitration case. Here's what I understand. Last year, the Brewers did this with a couple of players, and they got pissed off. If you own a Major League Baseball team, you're a billionaire, right? Or at least a multi, multi, hundred million dollar heir, whatever the hell that is. You're very rich. Why, when you, what happens in an arbitration case is the team has to basically shit all over the player. You point out all the player's flaws to try to get the arbitrator to, to agree with you that, that the player should get the lower salary. What I don't understand is if you're, if you have a payroll, like the, oh, shit like. the Marlins payroll is not on the higher end. But it's still somewhere around 90 to 100 million. So they pissed off one of their best players. I mean, I assume they pissed him off because I'd be pissed off if I had to go if if I was debating over salary with my boss and we had to go to arbitration to decide which salary I get. And for them to win, they have to crap all over me. I, I okay, that puts me that would piss me off. I would not be happy. I would not want to stay with that company. So instead of paying him 2.9, now a lot of these get settled, and we only end up having 15, 20, 25 arbitration cases, some years even less. But the difference was, was $275,000. $275,000 for a multi-billion dollar industry with a team with a payroll about 90 million you're gonna dicker over two hundred seventy five thousand dollars that's insane to me isn't it worth it to pay jazz chisholm an extra two hundred seventy five thousand dollars just so a i can keep saying his name over and over again and b so he you don't piss him off i don't understand Creative juice. Earl uses at the end of the day a ton. I use it too, so I can't just throw Earl under the bus here. We're, you know, he probably learned from me. If you're with us now, whether you're in the chat, whether you're sitting there quietly watching, uh, please hit the like. Please give you a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. I'm sure many of you that watch the 
the live edition here of the bullpen are already subscribers, but if you haven't done so, hit the alert bell. You'll get alerts every time I'm I'm doing a podcast. Okay. Uh, one other thing I wanted to hit on, the Cleveland Cavaliers are on a roll right now, and I got to admit I was disinterested in the Cavs for, for much of the year, and a lot of it was I was so invested in the team last year and so frustrated about how pitiful the end of the season was uh, that I I said in the offseason, I'm not watching the Cavs unless they make significant changes. Now, they added some players, but I didn't think they made any significant changes. And so I was being stubborn about watching the games because the reality is often during, especially in the early part of the basketball season, we don't get into detail on the game, either in the podcast or on UCSS because we're talking so much football. But as football was coming to an end and the team was playing well, I was like, I got to pay, you know, I got to get more locked in on, on the Cavs. And so obviously I've been watching more, even though I said I wasn't going to, but I, I it's my job. I got to do it. And I, and, and because they were playing so well and they seemed to be playing a different style, it was more interesting than the same old nonsense that we saw last year. Now I know there's some frustration right, right now because Darius Garland came back and even though they won it was against a terrible Pistons team. They did not play well defensively. And it kind of looked more like the team we saw last year, which in the end wasn't anywhere close to good enough. They got spanked by the Knicks. And yes, Garland was running the point, had the ball in his hands. There was a little more dribble than we've seen. The ball movement wasn't quite what we've seen. The, the paint was clogged up a little between Garland and Mobley. But in the end, folks, I may not be the biggest basketball authority, but I know this. You win with great players. Yes, chemistry, important. All this stuff is really important, but you need your best players to win. And for the Cavs to reach, you know, the highest level they can this year with as long as the current best players in this team don't change, it's not a crazy trade involving LeBron maybe then you have to get Evan Mobley and Darius Garland going again and and hopefully going at least in some way with the system that they were playing. Now, you have to adjust to your players somewhat, but those players also have to adjust to what you're doing. The stagnant standing around bouncing the ball doesn't work. The Cavs look their best when they're when they have the ball movement, when it's one in, four out. And they got, and to be able to do that, Darius Garland has to have the ball in his hands less. And we got to give it some time for him to find his way. These other guys have had their time to find their way as they've changed what they're doing. We got to be fair to Darius and give him some time. But in the end, I didn't say at the end of the day, but at the end, <laughs> you need to have Darius Gar Garland and Evan Mobley because they raise the ceiling of how good this game could be. No matter how well they played without him, the highest possible level this team could reach is if they find a way to incorporate those guys into the success they are already having. It's that simple. Uh, Cottonwood Slim tweets, and you can ask whatever question you want, folks, whether you want to jump in on camera or just ask a question in the chat or just ask, to qu ask a question on Twitter. You can ask about anything uh, you want. That's fine. doesn't have to be anything specific that I'm talking about. Cottonwood Slim's question. Are quarterbacks treated too much like starting pitchers? Example, Baker won playoff games against the Steelers. It's not like a quarterback can, can win a game by pitching a one-hitter. Uh, that is true. And I think, now that's not to knock Baker. I, I think I've been fair to Baker lately. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Baker, the truth is, He's played four playoff games, and he's played well overall in those four games. He played very well against Pittsburgh for the Browns in 2020. He played a decent game against Kansas City for the Browns in 2020. He played very well against Philadelphia this year, and he played a decent game uh, in their loss to the Lions. Now, in the end, he threw a big pick when, he mat when, when it mattered the most. And as I've said all along, I do not trust Baker in a big spot. He always seems to come up short in those big moments against the best teams. But 
The guy is a decent NFL quarterback. I've been hard on him at times. Sometimes in the middle of an emotional uh, argument, I might go a little too far with my with my you know, how good I think he is. He's an, an adequate NFL quarterback. In terms of the discussion with, with Watson, at this point, it's stupid. At the time of the trade, Deshaun Watson had been a million times better in Houston than Baker had been in Cleveland. There was zero reason uh, to to argue for Baker over Watson from, from a playing standpoint. Now, since the trade obviously hasn't gone well, both guys stunk last year. Baker was better this year. Uh, Baker played more because Watson was injured. It is what it is. But the trade was a no-brainer at the time, I thought. So far, it hasn't worked out. There's plenty of time for it. But to get back to your question specifically, Cottonwood Slim, yes, I think we, especially in a small sample size, looking at quarterback records is is stupid. It's stupid. It doesn't. It doesn't. Just like with starting pitchers, the win or loss doesn't always tell the story, and that's certainly the case with quarterbacks as well. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Now, you could argue, well, the quarterback is the biggest part of what the win and loss will be. Well, same thing for the pitcher, but it doesn't always mean that the the pitcher can only control half of the game. He can only control when his team's on the field. He has no control when, the, when it's the other way. Same thing for the quarterback. And the quarterback, like the pitcher, can't help luck either. That's Sometimes that's just going to happen. All right, uh, Justin Space won. The fact that Watson doesn't like scripted plays that the team practices all week is a little concerning. We talked about that last week. I asked Joe Flacco about scripted plays, and he says as far as he knows, which is what I assumed, every team does scripted plays. I think maybe that whole thing was taken out of a little context from what he said. I got to go back and watch the whole interview with him. But... uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's a big deal. I didn't think it was a big deal at the time when you know when he we talked about it and then then Deshaun Watson Deshaun Watson mentioned me in his podcast. I didn't think it was a big big deal then, and I still don't think it's a big deal. But anyway, let me tell you about this deal, folks, because we got a cool thing going on at Bet Rivers right now. Um, let me bring this up here real quick. So. Bet Rivers is offering a second chance bet on your first same game parlay on the big game, of course. Place a qualifying same game parlay on the big game. If your bet loses, you get a bonus bet equal to your wager. That's a pretty good deal. With your same game parlay bet, you also earn a square that can be worth as much as 10000 bucks. I don't think you're going to beat that deal. See the Bet Rivers app for full details and bet on the big game at Bet Rivers. Let's look at the I gave you the the future odds in just a minute. How about the current odds? Let's look at the latest line for the big game at Bet Rivers. And the Chiefs, or excuse me, the 49ers, they opened, I think, at two and a half. I believe it went down to as low as one, and now it's at two. The Chiefs of the Niners are a two-point favorite. On the money line, the Niners are minus 129. The Chiefs are plus 107. I love the Chiefs. I'm, I'm picking the Chiefs to win the game. I'll tell you already, 10 days before the game. I like the Chiefs. I like the under, 47 and a half. Uh, I would take the Chiefs on the money line because I think they're going to win outright. So, I, you know, you want... At at plus two, it's minus one ten. On the money line, it's plus one oh seven. You know, are the Niners going to lose? Uh, Niners going to win the game by one point? I, it's certainly possible. I expect the game to be relatively close. But I learned my lesson when the Bills beat the Chiefs. I was like, uh, I'm not I'm not betting against Patrick Mahomes again. Now the Chiefs are not a perfect team, and the Niners have better weapons overall on offense. But you have the be- the Chiefs have the better coach, the better quarterback. I'll go with that. I'll go with better coach and better quarterback. Who's got the better skill position player? Is Christian McCaffrey a better running back 
than Travis Kelsey is a tight end? Good question. I would say Christian McCaffrey, as an overall player, you'd probably put him ahead of Travis Kelsey. But I don't think it, on the all-time rankings of running backs and the all-time rankings of tight ends, Travis Kelsey would be higher than Christian McCaffrey. Now, that's not completely fair because Kelsey's been playing a lot longer than McCaffrey. But McCaffrey And, and there's more great running backs than there are tight ends. Uh, creative Juice question. Thoughts on Taylor Swift? Here's my thoughts on Taylor Swift. So I'm not a, a big fan of Taylor Swift musically. Her music and pop music in general, modern pop music is not my cup of tea. I like pop music from the 80s, the 70s, you know, more the rock stuff. Some of the 80s pop is not necessarily rock, but I like that type of music. So while she may not be my cup of tea musically, here's what I could say about Taylor Swift. She is an incredible artist, an incredible talent. She's incredibly popular. And anybody criticizing her, you want to knock the NFL for showing her on camera? Okay, I guess so. I saw this thing where I can't remember what it was. I think the Chiefs have played nine hours. They've been on TV in the playoffs for nine hours and change, whatever it is. And she's been on TV for a total of 90 seconds. And people make that seem like it's the end of the world. What? What do you care if she's on TV? I used to be like you. I used to be one of these miserable people that complained about stupid things like that. I have zero problem with Taylor Swift being on TV. Uh, there was some idiot. Uh, what's his name? Oh, I can't think of his name. There was some moron saying she's just you know, looking for the spotlight. She's just looking for a payoff. She's one of the richest entertainers, maybe the richest entertainer in the world. She makes way more money than Travis Kelsey makes. He, she don't need him for money. Are you out of your mind? I think it's, I can't remember the name of the guy. Some dope that calls himself an alpha male on Twitter. If you have to recall yourself an alpha male, you're not. I can't remember the guy's name, but he's clearly a beta male. Anybody that calls themselves an alpha male is not. If, you, if you're confident in yourself and you believe in yourself, you don't need to tell people you're an alpha male. What a loser. I can't think of his name, though. But uh, So I got no beef with Taylor Swift. It's crazy. Uh, Spike Lee is on TV way more. Jack Nicholson back in the day was on TV way more. Who cares? Why would that bother anybody? Joe tweets, Mahomes elevates guys and KC defense is very good and I'd say underrated. I agree, Joe. I think their defense is underrated. We're so obsessed with Mahomes, deservedly so. The guy's just an insane quarterback. But I do think we underrate uh, the Chiefs defense. I don't think there's any doubt about it. All right, nobody wanted to jump on camera tonight. A little disappointing. I hope to see you, but we'll, we'll do it next time. We'll get you on camera next time. Nobody wanted to. Everybody's shy today. They just want to ask their questions in the chat and uh, not on camera. Hopefully next time you'll, you'll have a little more confidence, maybe as much confidence as uh, Taylor Swift does, and be able to join us. Thanks to all of you for joining me for this live episode of the bullpen thanks to everybody who's been a supporter please hit subscribe please hit the like please hit the um the um alert to get alerts whenever i'm doing a live podcast sorry evan you're late buddy you would have gone on video next week we'll go maybe we'll go a little longer next week we'll let people jump in but uh that's it for today thanks to monzo and max for producing as always Everybody have a great day. I love you all. I really appreciate the support, uh, and we'll see you soon. This has been The Bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by